Actually, portable stoves, water filters, and toilets are now among the items being rushed to the disaster areas to ease living conditions for survivors. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Construction says it is sparing no efforts to speed help to the affected areas. Young victims of the earthquake have aroused the concern of people nationwide. Some ask why school buildings appear to have sustained more damage than other structures. The Minister of Housing and Urban Rural Construction explained that, in accordance with the national standard, houses in Sichuan are built to withstand an earthquake of up to seven on the Mercalli scale. In Monday's quake, the intensity reached 10 to 11. He says the investigation continues into the reasons schools appear to have been hardest hit. The priority now is to save lives. Estimation and analysis of the fallen buildings is still in progress. From what I saw on the scene, not only school buildings collapsed, but the surrounding houses as well. We are especially saddened by the number of student casualties. If the final investigation shows there were inadequacies in their construction, we will certainly provide the appropriate remedies. More than 4 million buildings were damaged or destroyed by the quake in Sichuan province. People remain in critical need of housing. That raises another problem for the government. How will homeowners retain ownership of houses for which they had already paid? We are still studying this problem and making plans. For example, we may build a number of houses for temporary accommodation over the two or three years. The number remains to be determined. There may be many people willing to accept a subsidy and live with their relatives. We are just raising this plan. The final approval lies with the central government. Many naturally are worried about their families in Sichuan. 1.2 million migrant workers from Sichuan are spread all over China. And the ministry says this is not a good time for them to go home. We'll comfort them and persuade them not to rush home. Transport, telecommunication and the living conditions are all badly disrupted in the quick hit areas. Saving lives is the priority, so transport and communication should all be used to support the rescue work. Jiang Weixin said water and electricity supplies have been severely disrupted in 20 cities and counties in the province. For the large number of survivors living in makeshift tents, Jiang Weixin said the government is doing everything it can to improve their living conditions. Li Xiong, CCTV.